Hello everyone. Um, my name is Javier Pinilla, I'm the hematologist, uh, oncologist, and um, senior member and head of the lymphoma program at the H. Limofi Cancer Center in, in Tampa. And I have the pleasure to be today with Masha Shadman from the Fred, Hatch, Hatch, uh, Hutchinson, Fred Hutchinson Center in, in Seattle. And we're going to, to discuss uh, one of his um, recent presentation at the American Society of Hematology. Uh, sustained superiority of sanurutinib uh, versus bendamustine rituxan in the treatment naive chronic lymphocytic leukemia and small lymphocytic lymphoma. The five years follow up in co cohort one on the Sequoia study, and obviously is the one who present. So, so let's let's go. I I, I guess many of the audience are, are familiar with the Sequoia, and as many other trial, we see the year updates. I think it's important to see how the patients are evolving. Could you tell us a, a little about this this update of the of the Sequoia of the Zanubrutinib? How things going? Yeah, I would be happy to. First of all, thank you for having me. As you mentioned that at the Ash meeting, we presented the five year follow up of the Sequoia trial. And, uh, you know, as a quick reminder, Sequoia is or was the randomized trial in patients with CLL or SLL who were previously untreated and they needed treatment. And um, they were uh, treated with one of the two arms on the study. The control arm received chemoimmunotherapy, bendamustine and rituximab, which was at the time of that study uh, design was standard of care or one of the standard of care therapies for patients with CLL without deletion of 17P. So this is a study that or what we presented, at least the randomized part is in patients without del 17P. So patients either got bendamustin rituximab for six cycles or they received zanubrutinib uh, twice a day for uh, until as a continuous therapy until uh, either they had progressive disease or they had toxicity because of which they had to stop treatment. So Sequoia uh, had already been presented and published, but the fiber data was presented and concurrently published at the Journal of Clinical Oncology in December of 24. Sure. In terms of the results of the study, the, the study in each arm, we had almost 240 patients to be exactly at 241 patients on the Zanabrutinib and 238 on chemo. And these were patients with a median age of 70, so it gives you an idea about the patient population there. As I said, uh, the patients with DEL17P were excluded, uh, but we had 14% of patients on each arm having complex karyotype, and that would be patients with abnormal chromosomes within the cancer cells. The highlight of this presentation and publication was the fact that with 61 months of follow-up, Zanabrutinib remained to be superior to chemoimmunotherapy. And uh, for example, at the 60 month time point, 76% uh, of patients on, on the Zanabrutinib arm continued to take the medication without having disease progression versus 40% in the chemoimmunotherapy arm. So that means that the Zanabrutinib continues to perform superior and better than chemoimmunotherapy. One of the findings that we started seeing with the longer follow-up of the sequoia is the following. Uh, with chemotherapy, patients with mutated IDHV do well historically. So when we first presented and published the sequoia results, we saw that zanobrutinib was better than chemotherapy in the unmutated IGHV population, which was not surprising because unmutated IGHV for chemo means that responses are shorter. However, with the longer follow-up that we presented at last year and now at ASH, we are showing that zanobrutinib is even better than chemotherapy in the mutated IGHV population. And I think it is important because some of our patients are worried about having a unmutated IGHV status, but we're now learning over and over that if you use a brutin tyrosine kinase inhibitor, BTK inhibitor in front line or first line, and in this example, we are seeing zanobrutinib, sounds like a BTK inhibitor, zanobrutinib here trumps that adverse kind of risk of an unmutated IGHV if you use the, uh, the, the zanobrutinib in this case or BTK inhibitors. 
I think the other point from the longer follow-up is always to look at the adverse events and side effects and to make sure that there's no new safety problem or signal and we're not seeing any. Actually, the safety profile is consistent with the earlier reports. And to focus on some of the side effects that we are specifically looking for and atrial fibrillation, bleeding, and hypertension, the rate seems to be actually pretty similar between the xanabrutinib and chemoimmunotherapy. I think in summary, we saw that xanabrutinib continues to work really well. It's better than chemotherapy. It doesn't matter if you have a mutated or unmutated IGHB. We're now seeing complete responses in the range of 21%, which is very interesting. With BTK inhibitors, we're not expecting a lot of CRs, but we know that with longer treatment, we achieve a reasonable percentage of a CR, and in this case, we're now at 21%. And there is no safety signal. So overall, this is a study, which was the study that led to the approval of xanabrutinib in first line, shows that from both from efficacy and safety standpoint, the drug remains to be a very uh, attractive option for physicians and patients. So this great data, and as uh, we were discussing this, um, the, the fact that these drugs really work better, or at least equally in mutated and mutated, is, 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 a, is a great, great thing. But what about the discontinuation rates on those patients? Because we know that as far as the patients stay on the drug, they're going to do very, very well in the long run. How, how this, this data is evolving in this trial? Yeah, that's a great question. Of course, there are different reasons for uh, treatment discontinuation, but that the percentage of patients who stop the drug because of adverse events or side effects with this more than 60 months of follow-up was around 20%. And, uh, you know, as we know, as you're on medication for a longer time, the threshold for kind of accepting the side effects changes over time. Um, but as you mentioned, that's an important factor to think about when we're thinking about efficacy. I mean, uh, efficacy is only an issue if you're taking the drug. And, and going briefly about the fact, I, I think is one of the important facts that we don't really say too much about CR, right? I mean, the, the truth is CR in a medication that you treat until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity is relatively, but, but the fact that in the future, maybe some of these patients may, may discontinue therapy. Is, is any data on, on how deep the response was measured in terms of bone marrows or, or I, I don't think MRD, but because I think it will be help also to understand some of these patients who have been in this drug for, for a long time. And we know that some patients may discontinue for other reasons. They have a, a period of, of remission, but I wonder with these deep responses, this may really also play an important role. Right. So the, the, the 21% is uh, CR and CRI kind of combined uh, data. As you kind of know that to confirm the CR response, these patients on this trial, when they met the criteria for CR, then they're required to have a bone marrow biopsy. Right. It's unfortunate that we don't have the MRD data, and this is a question that we're being asked. And yeah. uh, But the depth of response with the single agent BTK inhibitor was not a thing that many of us expected. Uh, there are things about the BTK occupancy and also the fact sure. that with your IC50 level, uh, your drug Correct. level remains above the IC50, regardless of the dosing. It, it gave us some clue about the, the potential efficacy, but we're seeing now with different studies that you know the quality of response seems to be pretty reasonable and good. Well, I agree that was predictive, at least one of the predictions that we are really were waiting to wait, right? Even truly... The, the ICPC was the occupancy was really longer and you they should be translated sooner or later. And it's true that it's not really very often to really see really empties of the bone marrows at such a five years, right? So I think it's an important point to really check it. So I, I think overall I, I guess uh, give us the the I, I understand that you know the drug uh, continue to perform very well after five years and so what, what do you will tell to our patients maybe now on on, on this drug as a frontline um, option? Yeah, I think that, again, xanabrutinib remains a, one, of, one of the best, and some would argue probably the best in class PTK inhibitor. Uh, you know, as monotherapy, we saw the data with longer follow-up with non-DEL17P. Uh, I think uh, hopefully next year in one of the meetings, we'll see the cohort for DEL17P, the RMC of Sequoia. Sure. You know, we know that just numerically, the numbers look actually pretty similar, but we'll see yeah, a right. final data. The last update. Hopefully mm -hmm. yeah. 25 and also the combination with venetoclax, the RMB of Sequoia was a combination study of xanabrutinib plus venetoclax. So hopefully we'll see that data 
presented soon as well. But overall, the field is moving towards combining a BTK inhibitor to a BCL2 inhibitor, whether or not it's venetoclax or sunrotoclax as a partner to thanobrutinib. And there are studies that have, are ongoing or have finished enrollment. So we'll hear more about xanabrutinib either as monotherapy or in combination in the upcoming years. Yeah, quite quite exciting time for, for our patient. And as you just pointed out, the sonrotoclax, xanabrutinib, uh, celestial trial, amazingly really en enrolled six months before uh, plan. So so I guess we will really hopefully see the, the results even uh, sooner. So thank you. Thank you so much, my Sarah. It was a once again, it was a pleasure to really talk to you, and I hope uh, the audience will, will enjoy our conversation today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Thanks. That's it. That's it, man. Thank you.